was Christmas Day of last year, and my five and my 10-year-old boys were trying to get my attention to show me how good they are in the way they were presenting their food, in the way they were selecting food from the main table and putting it into their own dish, and they were competing on this. They were really enjoying this game. This image made me think of, you know, it's great that they are enjoying this game. It's great that they, can, they have the opportunity of learning how to decorate their dish. But it also made me think, um, do they know that what they eat affects what they think? Do they know that what they eat affects how they behave, how fast they can run? It can affect how they play with their friends. And then something else came into my mind. I thought, well, if they think like this, are we any different, we as adults? Do we think differently? Or we have the same thoughts that they, they do? And um, when they were presenting their food, I thought, well, we are really good at presenting our food as well. And we often think that we are becoming superheroes of food. How many times we switch our channels, TV channels, and we switch from one channel to the other, and how many cooking competitions we see, how many show cooking. I think that by now, we know how to cook the best meal in three minutes. We know how to, where is the best ingredients for our food. We know what is the best restaurant in town, what is the best dessert shop in town. Um, this goes hand in hand with another phenomenon, and is the phenomenon of obesity. At the world, at global level, at the moment, the obesity tripled in the last 40 years, and two billion, so two billion adults uh, are either obese or overweight. Children are not different in any way. Unfortunately, also children, there are many children that are bees. So th there are 41 million children that are bees um, under the age of five, and also adolescents, that is, children if, and teens, adolescents, they are in between five and 19 that are bees, and there are 340 million adolescents that are bees. This is a problem because globally, people are dying because of the so-called so non-communicable diseases. Non-communicable diseases are, for example, cancer, is diabetes, is chronic uh, diseases. So what happens is that these diseases are often caused determined by the fact that we are, we are obese or overweight. So globally, we have these two phenomena. On one side, we have this great passion and this great knowledge. We do have this, so we are great cooks. We know we are experiencing ethnic foods much more than we did in the past. On the other side, we have another phenomenon, which is the obesity, is the overweight. So these two phenomena somehow made us think in our research team, what's going on? How is it that we are so passionate about food and at the same time we have this perception with this phenomenon of obesity? Well, first of all, you know, let's try and, and share uh, knowledge about what is healthy food. We pretty much know what healthy food is. We have a pretty good perception of what is healthy food. We may have, you know, different, uh, different uh, meanings in our mind, but still we know that if we eat more vegetable and fruit, it's good for our health. If we eat more fish, it's good for our health. But there are lots more than that. And at the moment, on the market, there is a lot of low or no sugar food, there is food with uh, claims about low or no fat. There are claims about low or no calories. How many times we buy you know, light uh, cheese? Other kinds of healthy food can be the less salt, you know, bread with less salt. It's pretty common at the moment. 
but also food with uh, less trans or saturated fats. And together with this, there is this free from phenomenon. There is all the food that is without something. It might be without sugar, it might be without salt, it might be without gluten, it might be without uh, palm oil. This is a very common uh, claim. Well, so what leads to healthy food? What drives our approach towards healthy food? There are things probably that you know, ease our approach to towards healthy food. There are things that put us away from healthy food. Well, we, are with, we were researching about this, and the first outcome is the taste. Somehow, whenever we think of healthy food, something clicks in our mind, and on one side there is healthy, and the other side there is tasty. It's like these two bubbles do not go together. We have a different perception. Healthy is not tasty. That's, this is something that happens in our mind. Time availability, definitely time is uh, very limited. We all work. Uh, we don't have that much time to cook at home. Uh, we try to buy ready-to-eat food, so food that we can eat right away. Other barriers towards healthy food is the price knowledge. When we go and buy food, our price knowledge is very low. So it's like if one-third of this theater only knew the exact price that they are paying for their food. We interviewed consumers at the point of sale, and we asked them, how much does this cost? Only one-third knew how much they were paying. All the rest were making some kind of mistakes. Some people would say they cost more than they actually cost. Some others would say it costs less. So it's very confused. Price perception, in addition to the price knowledge, there is another limitation, which is the price perception. We think it costs more than it actually does. Fish, that's too expensive. You know that light, that's innovative cheese, too expensive. So we even, we don't know how much we pay, in addition to that, we are, we stop ourselves, even before finding out whether it's actually more expensive than it isn't. Income. Income is a very interesting um, aspect of our lives. Income is a very controversial uh, element. Many think that income, it's a barrier. Many other things that is not really uh, the key issue. Overall, what I can say is that income is overestimated. We think that it's more important than it actually is. And if you think, if you put these elements together, food knowledge, price knowledge, and income, then it makes sense. You know, we don't even know how much we pay. So then again, what works? The point is, what is helping us towards healthy food? Well, definitely, the, the first thing that came out from our research is that if we are in control and if we trust ourselves, that's the a determining element towards healthy food consumption. So if we believe in ourselves, it is very likely that we engage into behavior that goes into the direction of unhealthy food consumption. So trust in ourselves. The other one is, if you're aware of these misconceptions, well, then search for information. Once you are aware that you don't know how much you pay, once you are aware that you don't really know whether this works or not, then you know, let's click in our mind something and go for it. Let's search for the appropriate information. Another aspect is to stay away from unhealthy food. It's very easy to say, it's very common. Well, unhealthy food is good. I mean, let's face it, we all like it, and that's the main point. We like French fries, you know, we like all sorts of hamburgers, uh, we may like all sorts of um, unhealthy food. The point is not buying it. So what is coming out from our finding is, stay away from unhealthy food. Don't put unhealthy food into your fridge. 
Don't make it handy, don't make it easy to access it. Satisfy your palate. This is a crucial aspect. For the same reason healthy food is away from tasty, for the same reason we should go and try to satisfy our palate. We will not be able to get easier, get closer to healthy food if we do not satisfy our palate with the food that we have, in, that we eat daily, on a daily basis. Other things that we can do is to reformulate. I'm not necessarily saying that if we like our lasagna, let's go for it. But let's try to put ingredients which are not as caloric as the traditional lasagna would give us. And that would give us the opportunity of eating it twice, eating it again. If we, don't, if we, we are stick to the taste and we do not want to change the taste, then let, let's cut the portions. You can just cut it a bit, like eat three quarters of your usual portions. So you're still familiar with it, you still eat it, and you still satisfy yourself, but to a more limited extent. Another strategy is find substitutes. Substitutes might be ingredients for the food, it might be also food itself, just such as sugar, and substitute it with stevia. I'll give you an example um, from my life. Each time my parents come to my house and they ask for a cup of coffee, what I do, I don't even tell them. I put stevia in their coffee. And I don't know whether they know it or not. They're here in the theater, I'm not going to tell them anyway. But the idea is to switch. And the taste of stevia is just as good as sugar. So try, try new substituted ingredients for your food. We are not, you know, singular persons living in some desert areas. We work in an environment. And often what we found out is that our environment affects the way we eat. And the context that we should try to stay in is should be as health oriented as possible. So the idea is try to, to hang around with colleagues that would go to um, a restaurant with healthy options, go to a vending machine with healthy options. It might not be easy. Maybe it's not so easy to find vending machines with healthy options. Fruit salads, for example and eat that kind of food. So really try to work on the environment, the setting you are located in. Other elements is the family. Family is the key environment where we eat. Usually we eat you know, within the family, at least once a day usually. And the idea is things work so we can access healthy food if all the family members like it. If family members don't like it, then sooner or later, the, all, the rest of the family will follow the more unhealthy options, because unhealthy options, usually you know, all, all members like it. So, also women can influence what we eat, definitely. I mean, still, uh, we're still at an age where women can really make the difference in the food that is bought, that you know, reaches our houses but it's also offered in our tables. And what happens is that women can influence what we eat between zero and three year old of the kids. Yes, that's very effective. Once they turn four, you know, after they're three year old, then they start choosing. And, you know, more salty, more sugary food. Why not? Why eating these vegetables? So women definitely are, you know, on average, are the most health oriented. That's what global studies say. But they are influenced, they live in a context, and the context can also influence their choices. Another element is cooking within the family. Invest time on cooking with the family, family members. That is, you know, husbands, it might be wife, if it's the husband that usually cooks but it's also children. 
by cooking and learning this, this passion really can really make the difference. And this leads to what is my main wish. My main wish is, is a perfect recipe. So my wish is that one day my kids, my children, the same ones that last year were telling me about how well decorated it was, will come to me and say, hey, you know, mommy, I found the perfect recipe. And I say, oh, yeah, good. So what is the perfect recipe? Well, the perfect recipe is something I made with lots of passion. I was really concentrated about this. I really loved cooking, and I really like it. So, you know, it's great. I cook, I like it, taste, satisfied. But it's more than that. That's oh, still my kids talking to me. It's, you know, I added some elf. There was an elf ingredient in there. I added some, uh, you know, some new, new ingredients, some ginger, some pepper. It's a bit hot, it's true, but you know, I tried. And it's, it's learning that the pe perfect recipe is the recipe that is respecting ourselves. It's the recipe that is teaching us how to eat, how, how to respect and care for ourselves. So the last message I uh, would like to give you is food is joy and pleasure, period. I mean, we cannot run away from this. And we should really try and do our best to eat food that we like, period. So that's our aim. But at the same time, let's start thinking that we also have to respect ourselves. We cannot just eat anything because it's there. We should eat something that we like it, that we like, but it also respecting our body and the body of ourselves and of the rest of the family. Thank you.